Blood glistened upon the hands of the demon who stalked through the dark forest. Its mouth was twisted into an anguished snarl to reveal gleaming white fangs. With each step, its wings thrust outward, beating against the frosty air. Smaller demons phased in and out of reality beside the skulking demon. A fell god, a succubus, a dancing imp. Each flickered like a mirage for a few seconds before dissipating into a hazy nothingness. The blue eyes of the demon swelled with insanity. It had killed. How many was uncertain. Each death lost in the hurricane of its mind, relentlessly sweeping each and every coherent thought into madness. It had travelled through the Solidan farmstead, claws striking blindly at the unsuspecting farm folk, teeth biting, hooves crushing. The sound of screams and wails slowly came to a halt as the demon tore into the last survivor with a savage scream. Now it paced, adrenaline pumping hard through its veins, the scent of death and ash heavy on its skin. More, more, more. It could only feel the insatiable need to destroy, rip and slay. The path it took was leading it closer to Stillwater Pond. Once a picturesque area for families to paddle and play, and weary travellers to dip their tired feet, it had become rotting, forgotten and dead. The demon came to stand by the edge of the pond. The water was thick and grey, unmoving. Bugs skittered out from the reeds that the demon's hooves touched, whispering out into the surrounding earth. It looked down at its reflection. Two blue eyes looked back at it, brighter than twilight. Blood had trickled down its horns and the sides of its face like war paint. It lifted its hand tentatively and traced a nail down its cheek. Someone's been busy. The husky voice pulled the demon's attention away from the hypnotic water. Two green eyes materialized amongst the reeds followed swiftly by a thick mane of coarse blue hair and a stocky, peachy body with four stubby legs. It shook vigorously, starting from its head all the way to its rump. Thick droplets of muddy pond water remained glued firmly to its body, matting its fur. It let forth a brief, aggravated growl before laying its eyes upon the demon. Bane, and you are? The dark hound Bane waited for a moment as the demon breathed hard, struggling to maintain any sense of composure. I could smell you coming a mile off, you know, Bane continued. You are smothered in blood, and I do very much enjoy the scent of blood. Bane closed his eyes. Mouth unashamedly hung open, he let his tongue loll. The demon snarled and beat its wings with agitation. Bane opened one eye and cleared his throat nervously. My apologies. The sound of a snapping twig caused Bane's ears to prick. He glanced around quickly, raising one clawed paw to his chest. Damned hunters, he mumbled, before trotting quickly out of sight. The demon met the hunter's shocked gaze with a wide smile. Alexis studied the map. Yep, this was definitely the place. The sepulchre was surprisingly well inhabited considering the fate of the surrounding areas. If you could count the undead as inhabitants? She crinkled her nose at the nasty smell as she took long, weary strides up the road. She'd never be able to understand why her brother had decided to take up residence here. Of all the places in Azeroth, an oncoming man bashed into her shoulder as he passed. She stumbled and cursed. Hey, wanna watch where you go? The man turned and snarled at her. The skin around his left eye sagged so far down his cheek that the gory flesh underneath was exposed. Valexis shivered and held her hands up. No problem. She walked backwards up the path for a few steps before sighing deeply of all the places in Azeroth. 
The striking red hair of her brother, Sorolon, gleamed in the dusty light as he turned to face her. The Lexis. He embraced her briefly before holding her at arm's length to study her. She grinned back at him broadly. Hello, brother. Sorolon turned to the Death Guard that stood next to him and gave him a prod. Death Guard Podrick grunted and turned its lazy eyes to give the Blood Elves a dirty stare. No visitors for the moment, okay? Podrick gurned. Yes, advisor. Brother, this place, frowned Valexis over her meal. Why this place? Sorolon rolled his eyes and took a slow gulp from his goblet. Mother has been so worried about you, she continued. And father? Well, he speaks not of his feelings regarding you being here surrounded by... the undead. But I know he hates it as much as mother and I. She dropped her bread onto her plate with a sigh. Sorolon leaned far back in his chair, pushing his plate away. Impatience littered his expression. I have duties here, responsibilities. I am needed. You are needed back home too, brother, fumed Valexis. She got up and crossed to the mantelpiece, eyeing a picture that sat atop it of her mother and brother smiling. She supposed her father had taken it. Sorolon's gentle hand rested upon her shoulder lightly. Let us not discuss this right now, sister. He spoke calmly. What news of home? Of you? Valexis sighed and turned to face Sorolon with a happy smile. Mother says she may have found the perfect wife for you. She giggled as Sorolon moaned and turned on his heel dramatically. She slapped his arm playfully. Well, if we can't bring you home, then we figured a woman might. They both laughed comfortably, glad to be rid of the tension. The door burst open and Podrick came stumbling through, breathing heavily. What the hell, Podrick? shouted Sorolon, crossing the room to stand in front of the haggard guard. Sorry, advisor, he huffed. Each word exhaled heavily as he held onto the door for support. News from... The Solidan. Yes, yes, news, go on, prompted Sorolon impatiently. He placed a hand on his hip and looked to the side, agitated. Massacre. No survivors. Advisor. Please, advise. Sorolon's expression darkened. Massacre, he repeated ominously. Valexis covered her mouth with her hand and came to stand beside Sorolon. With a sudden look of shock, she faced Podrig as the realization began to dawn. Why are you so out of breath? Massacre, come here, he replied. The scream from the demon tore through the sepulchre, shattering windows and cracking the tombstones. It stood with its arms stretched to the sky and wings outstretched. A trail of blood and entrails was smeared thickly down the path Valexis had travelled earlier that day. With a wide sweep of its clawed hand, it mauled the first wary guard with unrivaled strength, sending it flying across the cemetery its body smashing through the tombstones. Unsatisfied with that, the demon leapt upon the guard's lifeless body and began ripping and tearing at it manically. More guards had begun to surround the demon, weapons drawn, but the look of fear and uncertainty swam across their expressions. Oh my God, breathed Valexis as she looked over her brother's shoulder at the encroaching slaughter. Stay back. He spoke firmly. Go back inside, now! He turned and gave her a forceful shove backwards towards the house. She reached out uncertainly. N no brother, you must come with me. She spoke with a forceful calm that she did not feel inside. Sorolon took a step towards the demon and spoke over his shoulder. No! Get inside! 
When Valexis didn't move, he spun on his heel and placed his face in front of hers. Grabbing her tightly by her shoulders, he embraced her hurriedly. Now! he shouted at her. She recoiled, stunned and uncertain, before letting out a defeated cry and rushing inside. She huddled down beside the fireplace and pressed herself against the cold stone, tears of horror wetting her cheeks. The candles had gone out and left the room dark and still, and she shuddered in the muffled silence. The cracking thud of a hoof stepping heavily onto concrete shattered the stillness. Valexis whimpered and reached up to grab the picture from the mantelpiece. Clasping it to her chest, she rocked with it, muttering incoherent words as the footsteps of the demon came closer. Raspy breaths lined the air with a sickly sweet stench. Valexis opened her eyes slowly, just as the demon's claw swept across her face. The demon flung the blood elf over its shoulder and stormed outside, snarling. An alert had reached the Undercity, and more guards had arrived in bands of ten and twenty, brandishing stronger weapons. Flinging the blood elf to the ground, the demon leapt forward and stomped into the first band of guards, mauling with its horns. The first wave of arrows cascaded down upon the demon. Some skidded off its thick skin lightly, but others pierced through. The poisoned tip simmered and stung as the venom entered its bloodstream. The demon jolted as a flash of memory struck its vision. Silky light hair, golden eyes. A name was called out. The second wave of arrows twirled in the air before dancing downwards and slicing through the demon's wings. It roared and fell to one knee, grabbing a guard that had ventured too close and throwing it away in anger. The name was called out again. Who was that? Confusion began to devour the demon's mind, tinted with awareness. It closed its eyes and swung its head from side to side as its vision began to darken. Fire! 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 The Undercity guards aimed accurately into the sky, knowing exactly where their arrows would fall. No! Stop! Radiant charged through the armies, his huge form knocking them aside easily. He shoved and tugged at the archers to spoil their aim, whilst forcing his way towards the demon. Sham! He yelled out her name as he broke through to the front of the army. Sham, you must stop! They're going to kill you! He watched fearfully as a stream of arrows tore into her demon flesh, oozing out green and purple blood. The archers raised their bows to the sky with a resonating creak. Radin looked on as the demon fell to one knee, saliva mixed with blood dripping down its fangs. Fire! Fire! Radin lunged forward and raised his shield above his head. He slammed into the demon, knocking it to the ground. His shield took the main onslaught of arrows, but the demon cried out weakly as stray arrows pierced through its outstretched wings, pinning it to the ground. Stop! It is over! He boomed from under his shield. He rose slowly to reveal the demon's body, unmoving against the ground. As he watched, the demon's form began to crack slowly at first but then faster and faster into a million tiny cracks all over before shattering into an explosion of purple dust. Sham's body lay blooded and dirt-ridden on the ground. Her hair was matted with blood and her skin was burnt and marred. The Undercity army looked on for a short while. Satisfied that the demon now posed no more threat, they sheathed their weapons and turned on their heels. Radin knelt down beside Sham's broken body. He brushed strands of her hair away from her face and sniffed back hot emotion that churned within him. Why did you go alone? He blurted, swallowing hard. Scooping her up into his arms, he began the long journey to Ironforge. <laughs>